Uh, so if you're looking for something a little bit more in depth, that's when you're going to want to pay attention. And uh, I'll move on to at least introduce some of the other components we see inside of air handling units. We won't get too deep into the rest of them. We'll give a general, hey, this is what you can have inside and this is how it works. And then at the end, I'll introduce some questions to the audience uh, and uh, hopefully take some Q&A. So again, I'll move pretty fast through the constant volume and variable volume, but let's go ahead and get started. You ready, Tony? Excellent. Yeah, this is a good topic. I think, um, you know, my extensive knowledge tells me that air handlers are an important part of the HVAC system, if I'm not I mistaken. Would say so. One of the most expensive as well. So you want to get them right. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So we've got constant air volume systems, CAV, and we have variable air volume systems. Let's first take a look at some of the generalities of constant air volume systems. In today's world, they're going to be less common, way less common due to the adoption of VAV systems over the past few decades. They're going to provide single zone control capability. So I have one air handling unit that's constant volume. I have one thermostat, one zone. We'll get more into that as we roll, roll forward. So uh, typically we're gonna find these in older buildings where we haven't seen upgrades into a VAV uh, type of system. They're less expensive. We don't have a VFD on the uh, fan motors. We don't have uh, all of the sensors we would re be required to have in a VAV system, and we don't have VAV boxes. So it's going to be a simple install and a pretty inexpensive first cost. And they actually work very well in buildings that have consistent heating loads and cooling loads throughout. So let's take a look. How do they work? And how does an air handling unit work in general?